Okay, so you join me for part two. I'm recording this immediately after part one. I've just split it into two sections because section one was, I think, about 24 minutes long, 25 minutes long, uh, and it was getting a bit, it was getting a bit long-winded. So I decided to split it up. So that being said, we are at the user stage now. We're going to try to escalate our privileges and just get the second flag. So, first of all, just going to see, okay, oh, what's this? Order no encontrada. Okay, this box is not in English. We're going to run PS, uh, PS Ux. Uh, going to see what processes we've got running on the box. It's a whole massive load of processes. This is, uh, this is interesting. Uh... We've got Apache, which we kind of expect. We've got an FTP daemon, which again, we expect. Cron jobs, maybe we can check those as well. System D, system daemon, I guess. Uh, okay, nothing really I don't think this stands out. S bin in it. Let's just see what that one is. S bin in it. It's an executable starting the SysV initialization system. Okay, that's fine. I'm just looking, so when I'm looking in here, I'm looking for anything unusual, anything that stands out. I think I'm mostly seeing fairly standard stuff. Xterm, Perl. Some processes running as Thomas. Some as root. Okay. Uh, show all services Linux. Let's just make sure. Let's hit agree. Okay, so this is going to give us a list of nest at. Okay, let's run. Let's try nest at. We're not going to use this grep thing because we're not looking for anything specific. So what have we just done here? So netstat, and we've listed, I'm going to guess that's TCP, netstat, that's T, yeah, TCP, um, TCP, TUP, so TCP, UDP, uh, oh, it actually says here, uh, list, all listening sockets. Okay, so we've basically run everything we need to. Um, we can see everything that's listening here. Uh, I guess what is interesting is we've got another port here that's listening. We've got our local host 65111 which is our... this is our... Um, SSH session, but we've got another one which is 5901. Now, I've seen that before on a Hack the Box machine, and that was SSH tunneling. In fact, I think I covered it on my blog. How to tunnel VNC. Hmm. Localhost 500. Okay. So this could be interesting, SSH using VNC. Okay, so I guess we need to maybe, let me just, let's just make a note of that and we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's just do a little bit more enumeration. Okay, so 
ls minus la. Oh, okay, there's a remote cat dot. Okay, that looks like it might be encrypted. Um, remote dot secret. Okay, so it's just a data file. Okay. Encrypted though, how would we unencrypt that? That's got to be of some interest. That has to be somewhat useful. Um, as for how useful it is, I, uh, I don't know. So I guess what we want to do at uh, this stage is we want to we want to do something like this. We want to use SSH. Let's just move this over. Minus. In fact, let me just go to my blog because I have got this on a uh, hack the box machine. Uh, was it Servmon? Uh, I think this was, this, this is gonna be a spoiler if anyone hasn't done this machine. Yeah, here we go, this was a tunnel. Yeah, we've done this before on the... I think I actually uploaded the video of that to this channel. So what we need to do is we need to do set up a local uh, local connection from ports 5901, uh, which is going to go over the, the... It was on localhost, so 127.0.0.1. Um, 5901. So in my previous tutorial I've said that minus L is used to specify that connections given to the TCP port or Unix socket on the local client are to be forwarded to the given host on the remote side. So what that basically means is we're going to take this port and we're going to forward it onto uh, the remote remote side now. So I'm just wondering if should we probably we should be doing this. We shouldn't be doing this from inside the SSH session. We should be doing this. We should probably be doing this separately. So let's open a new terminal, paste this in, and what we now want to do is we want to record the uh, so we want to thomas at 192.168.5.152 and specify that port which was 65,111 so ultimately what we're doing here is similar to what we did on the this try uh, the, this uh, hack the box machine we're saying send this local port, we're forwarded it onto this uh, this remote side, this remote socket. And ultimately, as it says here, a process is going to be created. So let's give that a whirl. We know the password, Milo666. Okay, and then that's logged us uh, back in. So, now we have basically let's just recap what we've just done because this always this really blows my mind so we've got a pc let's call it alpha that this is the one we've attacked so we had ssh session on this machine this was running local port 5901 what we've done is used SSH forwarding to 
uh, what was that port? 65111. So now we can see, we can try to see uh, what is, what's going on here. So if we open up yet another terminal, sorry, this is a bit messy. And then if we run nmap minus a 5.152, uh, ports 5901. Let's just see what this does. Okay, so it's come back and it said that uh, VNC, it's actually saying it's closed, but I am not certain if I believe that. Let's do an SV as well. Okay, it's still saying it's closed. So why would it be doing that? Let's try man nmap. Okay, script scan, OS detect. We don't need to use any of these. We've done SV. Okay, I'm gonna assume that it's actually open. What we need to do is we need to check that this is uh, is listening. So man, LSO. So list open files. Uh, let's take a look for. Minus, let's see what minus, is it minus I? LS off, minus I. Let's give this a whirl. I think LS, uh, LS off, minus I, 5901. Uh, usage. I got the syntax wrong. Oops, that uh, took did the wrong thing. Here we go. Peering at a process. So we just want to. What I'm trying to do is see uh, just locally this process. The ls off. Oh man, what a horrible website this is. Network world. Uh, so many ads. Also minus C. Okay, so this should let us interact. It should tell us uh, the socket. It's not going to be something silly like this, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so colon, uh, the answer is basically to use a colon. And what this is doing is that it's listing the port that's that's listening there so it's basically confirming that we have indeed which we know pretty much we've got a session over over here on on this side so with that being said uh, I think what we what we really need to do is we need to see whether we can if we just run ls again, ls minus la, that was a VNC uh, that was VNC that was open here on that port 
It says it's closed, but VNC secret file or well, VNC file file login. Here we go. This sounds about right. How to log in VNC automatically. VNC viewer minus password minus an actual file, it looks like. Password file. And then user at. Okay, so let's try this from here. VNC viewer password dot remote secret um, I'm gonna guess it's Thomas at one nine oh or is it gonna yeah Thomas at one nine two dot one six eight dot five dot one five two Ooh. Okay. Or can we, have we got VNC? Not sure if we've got this installed. Okay. VNC viewer. Uh, let's just try VNC. Hmm. VNC viewer. Oh, it's already here. It's already here. VNC server. Okay. So VNC viewer. Uh, password minus password, and that's gonna be. Did I? Yeah. Dot remote secret. Dot remote secret. But we need to be doing that from our local port because that's listening here. So if we copy this, oops, did me to do that. I meant to do a copy. Couldn't read a valid password file from dot remote secret. Okay, let's try that here. Oops. It said VNC viewer had no no entry, I think that means. Okay, so I guess what we want to do is we want to so VNC viewer minus password dot remote underscore secret localhost five nine zero one that looks about right to me. Connected to the server, can't read valid password. Okay. Okay, so I've just tried a whole bunch of different things and <laughs> nothing's working, but I think it's because I need to copy that uh, out. I just tried to remove uh, to put that remote secret file in the HTML folder. I've not got permission. But why don't I just use SCP? Because I do have SSH permissions. So if I do SCP minus port sixty five one one one, and then we do Thomas at one nine two dot one six eight dot. What were we? What were we? dot five dot one five two and then I take that file home Thomas uh, that is right PWD home Thomas yeah dot remote underscore not remote user remote secret okay and we're gonna copy that to just our local local desktop Milo six 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 
And then what we should hopefully find now, if I run this again, aha, we are root. Yes, we are root. Cat, <laughs> we got it. We got it in the end. It's just a case of you had to copy out the VNC uh, file using SSH, SCP, to be more specific. While that was a very interesting box, I really enjoyed that one. That that was that proved quite difficult. The privilege escalation on this one made me think because we had to we had to use a weird uh, bunch of techniques there that you don't often see, especially that VNC. I've not seen that particular uh, thing before. Anyway, I guess in a, in another video we might come back to SSH uh, forwarding because it is a very interesting uh, skill to have in your arsenal. And there are several uh, CTFs I've seen use that kind of technique. So I think we'll cover that one maybe in the next, next video. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this has been useful. Sorry uh, that the video ran long, but hey, sometimes these things do. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.